start with the definition. So our power series So these will be centered at the x value of a. So it's a series of the form. So remember, series means a sequence, but the sum of the terms. So a series is always a sum of a sequence. And this summation. So I've used a n for the uh, coefficients before. That c n just stands for that uh, the nth term. These are going to be infinite series. And what makes it a power series is this term right here. So that's what makes it a power series. So you can see where it's centered right here. So it seems a little weird that it's x minus a. This should be kind of familiar. If we were graphing, this would uh, correspond to what type of a transformation? Shift or stretch? Shift. And if it was minus a, it would be shift to the right a. So if you think about where that would be centered, instead of centering at 0, you're going to go right a units. So it's going to be centered at A. So that's why we use that language, centered at A. Now depending on what the coefficient in front is, this uh, coefficient here, it may or may not converge for different x values. What x value always will make this converge? So 0 has something to do with it, but it's not when x equals 0. When x equals a, what is every term going to be? 0. So what do you get if you add up an infinite number of zeros? 0. So no matter what, it's going to converge when x equals a. The only question is, how far away can I go from a and this thing still converge? So you can think of shifting right a. Generally, the, there will be values close to A that this converges for. So there will generally be an interval around A. And the way we're going to measure this interval, we'll talk about the radius being R. So R is going to be the radius, and it's going to be the radius of convergence. And it's half the diameter of the interval, or half the length of the interval. So we'll do our, <coughs> I need to define radius of convergence. So the interval of convergence, it's what I drew at the top up there. The interval is going to look like, one way I could write it is just make up two letters, maybe B and C, and say from B to C. But this is going to be centered at A. So the way I'm going to write the interval of convergence is A. Um, the little one's going to be A minus R, and the big endpoint is going to be A plus R. So that says start at A, go R to the right, and R to the left. So that's how I wrote the interval out right here. 
Now the tricky part is once you get R, which is the first thing that you're going to find, you have to decide separately is the left endpoint included and or the right endpoint included. So sometimes it's open, sometimes it's half open, half closed, sometimes it's closed on both sides. So you have to decide individually on each side. So interval of convergence. Can be open. Half open, half closed. What is this? Is that if you're referring to the parenthesis? Oh, I haven't finished that thought yet. Oh, I haven't really defined it yet. <laughs> I just said what it can be, not what it actually the function of it yet. All right, can be open, closed, half open, half closed. So what I'm going to do is kind of cheat and just write these endpoints just to signify it could be parentheses, could be square brackets. All right, so definition. Uh, any x in the interval. So any x inside this interval, uh, let's, this summation needs to converge. So all it means is if you're in the if the x comes from the interval of convergence, then that series better converge for that x value. That's all it means uh, to be in the uh, interval of convergence. I'll call this guy x naught instead of just regular x because it's a fixed element inside. So ready for some examples? All right, we'll start off with some easy examples. So find the radius and interval of convergence. For the easiest, or one of the easiest power series I can think of is just x to the n. So normally I say ratio test first. Why is root test really good for this? Everything is raised to the nth power. So root test takes one nth power. So it's going to cancel out the nth power right there. Let's uh, write down the root and ratio test really quickly before we uh, go on. So I'll look over here at the blue marker and we'll write, uh, we're about to use the uh, root test. I'll write them both down. Start with the ratio test. So make sure if I say something wrong, make sure you correct me here. So if we have a summation a n ratio test, they had to not just be positive, but zero is not okay because we're going to be dividing by a n plus one. So a ratio test needs positive terms. And then we're going to let rho equal lim n approaches infinity so that was a ratio test root test is uh, very similar I have not written the conclusion yet they have the exact same conclusion so I'll write the conclusions all together so root test is a little bit more relaxed because a n could equal zero, but it can't be negative because you're going to take a root. And this one, let rho equal lim n approaches infinity. This is going to be the nth root of a n. So that's the difference between root and ratio test. 
So either way, our conclusion So what happens if rho is small? What do we get? Convergence. What happens if rho is big, bigger than one? Divergence. And what happens if rho equals one? Can't tell. We get no useful information. So we write inconclusive. Now, if you write inconclusive on your quiz, that's not going to be full credit. So what do you get if rho equals 1 and your ratio or root test tells you inconclusive? <laughs> Use a different test. Generally, if one of these is inconclusive, the other one will be inconclusive as well. There's no situations I can think of, no series that it is convergent for one and inconclusive for a different test. So usually if you get inconclusive, don't try the other test here. Go interval, uh, integral test or a comparison test or a limit comparison test. So inconclusive, you're going to try another test. I will give partial credit if you tell me a conclusive results, but that's definitely not the answer. All right, so let's go root test. All right, what's wrong with applying the root test? What part of the hypothesis are we breaking? What does a n have? What properties a n have to have for the root test? Greater or equal to zero. Greater or equal to zero. Well, x so far x could be negative, and n is going to be odd half the time. It's going to go even odd, even odd, even odd. So there's plenty of negative values in there. So what we're going to do is take an absolute value. What this is going to tell us is absolute convergence. So if you remember alternating series. Regular convergence or conditional convergence requires uh, the terms to have their regular signs on them. Absolute convergence, you're going to make every term positive, And if the series converges absolutely, then it converges conditionally. So what we're going to do for our root and ratio test, this is not the root and ratio test, but for us, we're going to put absolute values in here to make sure that everything is positive. So our terms are actually going to be the absolute value of the original terms. So what we're doing is actually checking for absolute convergence. So for us, we're going to take a n to be the absolute value of x to the n. And nth root could be written as 1 over n power. All right, we have a slight issue of how in the world do we deal with powers and absolute value. I want to just cancel those powers out, the n and 1 over n power, but the absolute value function is in the way. So one of them is on the inside of the absolute value, the other one's on the outside of the absolute value. Does it matter if you take the absolute value and raise it to, now it is important, n's an integer. Does it matter if you take the absolute value of x and raise it to an integer power, or if you raise it to an integer power and then take an absolute value? Integer power is important, because if I did a square root of negative 1, an absolute value would be different than absolute value of negative 1 square root. Good news is, as long as you're not taking roots, it doesn't matter the order you go in. So that means I could write this as absolute value of x to the nth power raised to the 1 over n power. So I can change the order. <coughs> 
All right, powers cancel. Now we have the easiest limit in the world. What is this limit? Absolute value of x limit as n approaches infinity. X. Just absolute value of x, all it's going to be. There's no ends in there. This would be different if this was limit as x approaches infinity. This would be completely different. But the limit variable has nothing to do with x. All right, so we just have absolute value of x. This is called rho, or if you want, you can just use the letter p. Looks just like a rho. All right, so rho is absolute value of x. So looking at the conclusion, when rho is small, less than 1, it converges. The only thing I'm really concerned about is when does this converge? It'll diverge other places. So when rho is less than 1, we get convergence. And rho is absolute value of x. So just quick substitution. There we go. When absolute value of x less than 1, this converges. Where is this series centered at? It doesn't quite look like the power series I defined above. So let's rewrite it so it actually is written in this form right here. It's almost in this form. So the form I want to write it in, some cn times x minus a to the nth power. All right, what is a? A is 0. So that's the first thing to see. <coughs> so I could write it as x minus 0 to the n. What about cn? cn is always 1 in, for this series. All right, so this series is centered at 1, uh, centered at 0, and has a radius of 1. So this is our radius. So if we have our number line, we're centered at 0. I can go 1 in each direction. The only question I have now is, and I know in the middle it's going to converge, so everything is good in the middle. I just have to decide what about the endpoints. Should I use 1 and or negative 1? So unfortunately, the root ratio test, no matter what you use, is never going to help you at the endpoints themselves. You have to use a different test. So we're going to test the endpoints separately. So it doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'll just start with the small one. So I'm going to test uh, x equals negative 1 first. So when I plug that in, it is negative 1 to the nth power. All right, converge or diverge. So we don't have a power series anymore because we filled in a value for x. So this is just a regular series. You can go back to anything pretty much in chapter 10, any of those tests. Just remember, root and ratio is not going to work on this guy. Integration? What's that? Integration test? You c Maybe. It's going to be a little weird because it goes negative 1 and then positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. So if I graphed out all the terms, when n is 0, we have positive 1, then negative 1, then positive 1, then negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. If I keep adding 1 and negative 1, 1 and negative 1, does that ever settle down? Nope. So the p first partial sum will give me 1, the second partial sum gives me 0, and then 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So it never settles down. What is a good test to use here to say that it diverges? There's one really easy test to use. It's the only test that tells us divergence only. Which divergence test did we have? So 
So we had our nth term test for divergence. So let's think about that. So here, a n is negative 1 to the n. This is very different than the other tests because I'm not taking an root, uh, nth root and I'm not taking a ratio here. This is just what happens when the terms, uh, to the terms when n gets really big. So what can we say about this limit here? What's the limit of negative 1 to the nth power when n gets really big? Or is there no limit? So there is no limit. It goes negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. So this limit is does not exist. So remember, nth term test for divergence says if this limit is not 0, it automatically diverges. So the nth term test says if this is not 0, it automatically diverges. So I could write dne is not the same as 0. diverges. So I'm going to go back to my interval and I get to explicitly say negative 1 is out. So I'm going to not include negative 1. And I think we don't have time today, but tomorrow we'll check positive 1. And so how did you know when you were doing like the ratio of your test, how did you know to like use 1 and negative 1 as your points to check? So that was, I knew I was centered at 0. I knew my radius was 1. So how did you know your radius? Uh, CN is one. It's basically uh, your. This one was kind of too trivial to explain. I think on the next, some of the next problems that'll make more sense. You basically want this to converge, but a lot of times you'll get like x over two, or uh, you'll get like a one half, so you'll multiply by two or something like that.